Hi, I'm Evie Kim Singh, editor of IdentityWeek.net. We're here at the Washington Convention Center for Identity Week America 2023. And now I'm joined by Jay Meal, who's the chief data scientist and director of AI at SAIC. Um, it's great to speak to you today, Jay. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. How is SAIC utilizing cutting edge technology in the space of engineering, AI, digital technology? So it's a, it's a really good question. Um, we are very mission focused at SAIC um, and we are a large systems integrator. So our job is to help find the best of breed solutions for our customers out there across the Department of Defense, the intelligence community, the law enforcement community, uh, and the federal civilian community at, at large. Um, so we've really leaned heavily into this concept of growth technology accelerators. Uh, we've created uh, innovation factories uh, that really focus on solving these challenging problems around digital engineering, like digital twin and model-based simulation engineering. Um, cloud migration and cloud operations, so getting all your applications off of premises and into the cloud and how do you manage that. Um, cyber, things like zero trust acceleration and making sure that you have zero trust systems. Um, and of course, my background, artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, how, we, how we collect data, how we clean data, how we analyze data, uh, and then how we use artificial intelligence and augment how decisions are being made. And how is this helping you know, public infrastructure government challenges, can you just elaborate on what those challenges are? Yeah, so um, ac across the board, I think if you could distill it down into one problem, it's data is everywhere, right? Um, we have a deluge of data being collected from every modality and sensor and phenomenology you could imagine. Um, we interact in our daily lives constantly with our phones, with our you know, computers, you know, with our TVs, whatever it might be, all of our smart devices and Internet of Things. Um, and all of that data is being fed back into systems that very often uh, the federal government uh, needs to be able to analyze that data. The other piece of that though is that data is not structured. So when we think about data, a lot of people think, oh, well data is like an Excel spreadsheet and I can read it. You know, it's in a human readable format and I can understand it uh, and I can do things with it. And the reality is about 90% of the data that's collected, so audio, video, you know, position data, sensors, all of that is really messy. Um, it's not human readable. It's it's not necessarily easy to transform, um, and it's not necessarily ready to go into uh, artificial intelligence and models to make decisions. So I would say the biggest problem is data. It's that aggregation piece, it's the data governance piece, and then it's sharing and dissemination more than anything else. Um, what IAM and vetting technology is employed to secure data from your partners, um, employees, yeah, so uh, another good question and kind of leads back to the to the data problem. If I if I have all of this data, how do I collect it? And more importantly, how do I protect it? So um, we have uh, really, like I said, best of breed technologies. We've gone out and we've acquired um, a technology that was actually first developed uh, at the National Security Agency 20 years ago, uh, and it's called Coverse. Um, and what Coverse does is it's a true zero trust compliant database that allows you to do something that we call atomized data or micro segment data, where I, most people have heard of role-based access controls before. You know, I'm, I'm a manager, so I have more access in a system than somebody who's not a manager. This is really about attribute-based access controls. And what attribute-based access controls are is they have metadata attached to each piece of data, whether it's one cell or one image or whatever it might be. Um, and how somebody receives and looks at that data comes down to what their attributes are matching against the data's individual attributes. And so every time someone queries data from any system that is tied to Coverse, it's going to not only check to make sure it has the data that they want, but also check their credentials against how that data is labeled. So this is really opening doors in the defense space, you know, to make sure that we can share data between organizations and agencies, or even between partners, like our Five Eyes partners across the world. Um, and, and really that ability to share data because we have trust in that system is gonna make it easier to make decisions overall. We talk about data um, and system interoperability. Yeah. Um, is this the case with federal data management software? So it needs to be. Um, I, I think that right now we are still living in an era where we have what I call single software stacks or single software solutions where I need to go out and buy a system for my organization and so I'm gonna buy an application. 
Well, that application requires some type of power hardware to run it, so I'm going to buy that hardware. And the data that's being stored there has to be put into a particular type of database in a particular format. And unfortunately, what you end up with is over time, hundreds of these individual systems that don't talk to each other, that don't communicate back and forth, that are not interoperable and they're not interconnected. So I think the key is to break the paradigm of these single software stacks and move towards this era of, we'll call it a single experience, uh, where you essentially have a common data layer that can touch lots of different systems using an open architecture and APIs. You have a common analytic framework, right? that can analyze from all of those different systems that are feeding it and the data that's underneath. And then you have a plug and play or a microservice architecture so I can bring lots of different disparate applications into this system and I can take them out or put them in whenever I need to and I don't have to re-architect every time, but I have access to the data flows as I need to. I think that's very important. Integrated. How travel sectors and government integrated in their approaches to protecting cybersecurity, national security um, and monitoring immigration which is probably a, a joint objective for them. Um, how does this transparency and collaboration actually work? So I think that, and I was just on a panel and we talked about the same thing. I think to get to a level where we can do the proper vetting that we need to do, we have to have sort of a modicum of trust from the public and the community and from the partners. We're collecting a lot of biometrics and a lot of biographics on individuals who are traveling you know, across the country and across the world. Um, and the better we can show collaboration and partnership and trust within, with collecting that data, managing that data, governing that data, and also uh, a level of explainability around the artificial intelligence or machine learning that we're using uh, in order to make decisions with that data. Um, I think that we create this overall comfort level, right? And that increases adoption. And if we increase adoption, then it sort of normalizes this stigma around data sharing and biometrics and biographics, um, and we can get to a better, safer world that way. Thank you so much. I wish I was in that session earlier. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it.